Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Right now we're at the end farm and this is where we left off last episode. I have finished enchanting all of those iron swords and this took me about 35-30 minutes to do in total and although it takes you 40 seconds to level up in the farm bit there you actually have to eat as well and uh, travel in and out to do your enchantments so it does take a little bit longer just over a minute I'd say for each item uh, but here you go out of the 30 swords that we enchanted I got four looting swords and I think that's a great return for the time that I've invested all of these swords were free because um, I took them from Hypno's experience farm because zombies drop these items as a rare drop so he's got loads of those uh, but imagine if I'd have used diamonds on this, that would have been almost a stack of diamonds and we only would have got four looting swords. So I think this is the way to go about doing it. I can easily spend some time back here in the future and make sure I keep myself a nice supply of looting swords. And in case you're wondering, it's actually the same uh, possibility of getting a looting free enchantment on an iron sword as it is diamonds so there's no advantage to using diamonds over iron apart from durability but with iron being so disposable it's well and truly worth doing it that way. So we're back at the base I brought the iron swords with me and what I really want to do now is try it out on the XP farm but of course we don't have one set up because I took it apart and I was thinking that we could easily set up a little mob separator just using a cat and a villager and we can make the creepers go one way and the zombies go the other way and then the skeletons whatever way they pick to go wouldn't really bother me because uh, arrows and bone meal are quite useful but we've already got a good supply and then that way I could use the looting swords on just the creepers and get tons and tons of gunpowder from it um, but yeah we took this apart and oh that was clever uh, might even be able to use an ender pearl to get up there let's try like that oh I think that's gonna fall straight back oh okay that worked <laughs> So yeah, eventually I fixed this. Someone sent me a message saying that what I should do is um, is push this over one more block because the water used to come out here and then make this bit here four blocks high and then they'll definitely fit in there and drown. So I think the logic behind that is that the mobs being too high will move up into this bit here. So any coming in underneath them won't actually clip the mob above and then they'll move up into it. So yeah, anyway, that now works. Um, I haven't actually done a test on it. That's something actually I should probably do before uh, making a new XP farm, but that's what I came up here to do. I've got a ton of glass on me. I just want to build another temporary XP farm so we can try out the looting swords on it. And uh, I want to make it so that we can up here choose uh, if we're going to use the drowning trap or the XP farm. So we can leave that set up temporarily while we do our testing and stuff on this mob spawner but I've got a feeling that the better rates were happening when we were down below and we're probably going to go back to that in the long run but anyway I think what I'll do now is do that half an hour AFK test and see how many drops we get. So other members came on the server before I could finish my test and then the drops just went right down so it wouldn't have been fair to count how many there were but you can see I've set up this temporary XP farm and I was just laughing at myself at how derpy this looks. Uh, compared to the old one that we had but uh, yeah I want to use this as I said to use the looting on the creepers so uh, I think I've done everything right we hit that valve that blocks off the uh, water from going that way we open this one and now there's a too high path leading down to the XP farm okay let's do a test I'm um, just thinking I've already got some gunpowder in my inventory that's the main thing we're going to be counting so we've got 41 there and uh, let's use this looting sword, this might take a moment. So we've gone from 41 gunpowder to over a stack and a half, which is really impressive, although I couldn't actually tell how many creepers were in there, but one thing I've noticed is that my sword has been beaten up quite a bit by this, which is a little disappointing, although we were hitting all of the mobs that came down here, so in the future when we have a mob separator we'll only be attacking the creepers, and I think then it will be worthwhile using these looting swords on them. But anyway, we should head back into the nether because we've got a big project to attend to there. So before we head back to the nether, I just want to do a little something quickly because I was talking to Generic B on Skype and he was saying he's working on a chicken farm that doesn't use any water. And it just made me think, often when we make farms and stuff, there's usually an objective like uh, we want all the drops to come to us in a water stream and things like that that... 
um, you forget to like try and think outside the box. Anyway, I've never really thought about making a chicken farm without water, and I think the reason that Generic wanted to is because of that lag problem. So rather than build your chicken farm 16 blocks away from where you are, if you can build one without water, then you won't have to worry about that lag problem. So I've had this idea, and I think it's going to work. It's so simple, it seems almost silly to not think of something like this before. Um, oh yeah, I've just been to the uh, animal breeding... Uh, what do we call animal breeding pens and harvested tons of this stuff with my looting sword I should have put this away before I came over here really but we're gonna need some eggs and just a few blocks I think to make this and um, that should be enough and we've got enough blocks here might need to make a crafting bench quickly as well oh we got one there that's good um, yeah and I'm just thinking this is ever so simple if we take a couple of half slabs like that um, just need a little bit of area to build this. So I think we've got enough space over here to build it. And right, if we just do a small one for now, put down some half slabs like this, and then we're going to remove those blocks in a moment. And then we take them out. Now I think the chickens might be able to escape out of this. But if we go a little bit higher and just place a few more blocks up here, they shouldn't be able to get out. And of course we can put on a roof as well. But now if I just stand here and hatch the chickens... Oh! And they shouldn't be able to get out from the bottom. Uh, this guy got out, but these ones I don't think can. Let's do a test. If we hit one and make it a bit crazy... Yeah, it can't get out. Okay, so you can keep the chickens like this, just standing on the half slabs. And the reason that I've done that is so we can just walk up to them and pick up the eggs. And I think that's just such a simple way to make a chicken farm. But I think there's more we can do with this as well, you see. Um, we could put some dispensers behind it with lava to cook them. Uh, maybe we could even have some sort of separation system. So when they grow into adults, we can keep some of them in there laying eggs. And then we send some others into another one. But... That is literally it. I, I was just thinking, you know, you put them on half slabs, you've got this gap they can't escape from. You can walk right up to them and pick up the eggs that they lay. So I'm going to leave these here for a while, actually. I'm going to hatch a few more in there, see how many we can get, and just see if there's anything I've overlooked. So I'm trying to see how many chickens I can get in here, and it's given me another idea. Again, this stuff's really simple, but sometimes you just forget how simple things could be but we could build two of these one next to the other and one of them has a dispenser on with some proper redstone so you can turn a lever on and off but then that would rapid fire the dispenser which we can fill up with eggs and those eggs we get from one farm and um, the one that we never kill the chickens on and then the other one with the dispenser we could put a lava cooker in there and then activate that after they've all grown into adults so I think we've got a pretty cool concept for a chicken farm here so they're adults now and they've started laying eggs as well which is good because I want to gather a load of these up and go build one of these at spawn. We're going to be working in the Never next, so I thought I could take a little trip over there and build one of these little chicken farms. Um, but we're going to need a lot of eggs because I've used most of them up so it may take a while before I head over there. Um, but I did have a thought, now I'm not 100% sure about this but the chickens, if you have a look, they're really grouped up in the corner which made me wonder if they would actually drop some of the eggs outside. Um, it's quite unlikely, but in the case that they did, I was thinking about AFK farming because I thought I could just stand here and then I think if I'm directly in the middle, then any drops that land on either of these two blocks I'll be able to pick up. But if some are to fall... Oh, there you go. Two just fell down on the outside. Well, there's, there's a good example. So if they were to fall on the outside like they did just then, um, then we could have two water source blocks here and they'd flow in this way and then on both sides they could go round to the uh, to the front if we put some cobblestone or something round the outside and then we could bring them to these two blocks here where we could have pressure plates and I could stand right here in the middle like this and then I would pick up the eggs that get pushed round by the water to either side so we could make it a AFK system as well so the problem with this is that the water doesn't flow correctly on these sides but then I looked at these two blocks and I thought they're not even necessary so we can take them away and now all I think we need to do is just put those water source blocks uh, here and here and block these two off. Okay so that didn't work at first what I had to do is widen the streams like this so that then they're going to flow a diagonal so now I can stand here and farm. 
So I just died, I was here AFK farming and when I came back to the computer I was dead so all of my items have despawned and that means that I've had to take out another bunch of diamond tools and now that chest is starting to look a bit sparse which is quite annoying um, but what's really annoying is I don't know what exactly killed me if there was a big hole here then I know it would have been a creeper but my guess is that it was a skeleton um, I've lit up all of this area ever so well but every now and then you just see the odd mob but anyway um, we've got plenty of eggs here now so we can go back to spawn and make a chicken farm but before we do that what I want to do is continue work on the tube so I've got a fair amount of uh, oh that was a great shot a fair amount of uh, smooth stone here and what we're going to do is take all of this into the nether and turn it all into the slabs and then build as much of the tube as I can with all of that before we go to the spawn and build the chicken farm. 17 and a half stacks of smooth stone later we have made some progress. I've turned all of that into stone slabs of course and I've been laying them down. And this goes all the way over to the big wall of netherrack and that's kind of hard to describe because I know this terrain a lot better than you guys do obviously. But uh, let's head down there, and I've got to tell you, if I had a diamond for every ghast that I've killed, I'd have at least a stack. I mean, it's been crazy up here. I've had them shooting at me all the time, um, sometimes two or three at once, and I've even seen them spawn a few times. I've seen some spawn over there, off in the distance, and I've even seen, I think, two of them have spawned on the bridge while I'm working on it. So, it's been pretty crazy, but because I've been up here, I haven't been... Speak of the devil. That was almost predictable. Uh, yeah, because I've been up here... Am I... what was that? <laughs> yeah, because I've been up here I haven't collected any ghast ears, uh, which is a shame, but I've already got loads of them so it doesn't really matter. But this is a far, as far as I've got. Um, this bit here is Joe Hills and Hypnose and everyone else's little tunnel back to the hub. And then we go through here. And this tunnel, which is awful to walk through, leads us all the way back to the nether hub. And I think I might change my mind about doing the diagonal bit here. I might do something different now because um, we've come all the way across that big open area and now we're going to go through Netherrack. So I might make a different tunnel for this bit. And I'll tell you what, walking through here is so annoying. It's worse than Generic's Troll Bridge. Let's just use some Ender Pearls to get through this a bit quicker. So yeah, I might do something... Oh, I thought we were out then. I might do something um, different. There we go. Nope, it's still loading. There we go, that looks like it. So I might do something different. Instead of coming through the netherrack like that, I think what I'm going to do is go in a straight line across that way and then make a right turn and go all the way alongside uh, Generics and Corellis' bridges back to my little entrance over there. And then we get to do the cool thing with the lava hanging down from the ceiling, at least for the last part here as well. So anyway, I'll investigate that later because we've still got a load of construction to do and uh, that is going to take me a long time so I think how I'll do it is each episode we will get a load of smooth stone together and continue working on it and then that way we'll make some progress over time but uh, at the moment what I want to do is go back to the spawn perhaps show you uh, some of the stuff that's been going on there because there's been a lot of changes but yeah I'm going to go build the chicken farm at spawn as well so we are back at the spawn and Cube Hamster has been building this uh, crazy sandstone platform over here which I think he's going to build his big tree farm on and uh, he's built a new sand generator as well he didn't come up with the design he found it somewhere and built it but if you recognize some of the mechanics here like this part here is what generates the pulse that allows you to uh, duplicate the sand then you'll notice that there's actually four of these uh, in a row like that and the normal machines that we've been using have two and then you have this clock here that activates them and I've forgotten where the lever is Oh, it's just over here. So yeah, check out how fast this is. Do I have any sand on me? I don't think so. So in just a few seconds, we will get... Ah, oh, you have to hit that first, and then it all falls down. So we got... Well, look at that. Four and a half stacks. That is a hell of a lot. But yeah, um, I helped you build some of this in a live stream. We put a bunch of chests down here. And the uh, chests look really cool next to smooth stand, uh, sandstone, I think. And then also over here, cilantro has been building his base, which looks really interesting. I'm going to go have a look around that in a moment. And also Aurelian has a little mushroom house over the other side. Uh, but what I'm going to build next is the little chicken farm, as I said I would. And what I think I'll do 
and this is just an idea I'm going to go uh, check out all the measurements and stuff but if I make the chicken face out of wool and then put the farm inside of it and then we could plop that down on the ground somewhere around here I've just got on back from Corallus's sheep paradise island over there in the distance and the sheep that he had were white, red and yellow which is very convenient because they're the colours we need to make this chicken head and I had a look in creative mode, there's no way you're going to fit the farm inside the chicken head so what I thought we'd do is tidy up this little plot of land here and we'll build a chicken head and in front of it have a staircase that leads down to the chicken farm so I finished building the chicken farm but I have a little bit of a story to tell before we go take a look at that I came over here to kill some squids and get the ink, ink sacks so that I can make black wool for the eyes on the chicken and the squids were a lot da lower down than I thought and after I killed them and started swimming back up I started to take damage and I probably would have made it to the surface okay but I thought I'd be clever and throw an enderpearl which completely backfired because I was underwater and it just made the enderpearl sink and it teleported me down to the bottom and of course I died and again I lost a bunch of decent diamond tools I don't think I've got any good swords left to use and it just it really frustrated me basically I'm even thinking about just using all of those iron swords that I've enchanted but let's take a look at the chicken farm this is ever so simple I'll uh, remove that chest in a moment it looks like one of them has possibly escaped or he's derping around hard to tell now he's hiding in the block <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've just tidied up the area here, made it flat, put down loads of bone mills, so we've got loads of grass and flowers. And then if we just go down here, you can see, real simple, it's the same concept I had before with the water. So you can just stand here and get some eggs, and then there's some chests on either side, which I hope people will fill up with eggs in case anyone needs some. So it was nice to go back to the spawn village and see what was happening there. It's been quite some time since I've been back there and done a project I guess even if it's just a little chicken farm but uh, it's nice to go see what other people are doing and Cube Hamster is building some cool stuff there and that has reminded me that he's building that big tree farm the automatic one and he wanted a bunch of resources from us to build it with and I said I'd be happy to contribute and I have absolutely tons of this stuff I don't know I must have like at least a chest full of redstone ore and I've got tons of smooth stone as well so I thought I'd supply him with some repeaters. Now I know he needs a lot, I'm not sure how many but I thought I'd make three stacks and hopefully that'll be enough. Okay let's do some crafting. This is always cool to make stacks of stuff like this. Boom. One stack. Two stacks. And a third one for cube hamster. Man, that sand generator is loud. <laughs> anyway, left cube a sign and I didn't sign it, that was clever. There we go. Just put the chest down and then chuck the repeaters in there. And it's time to head back to the base. So I was just reading the comments on the last video and there was an awesome suggestion in there which we can do at the moment. And that is just to use a health potion on here. So, if we throw one here, it should kill all the zombies and skeletons. There you go, you can see we're left with only creepers, so now we can get tons of gunpowder. The village project is going to be a long term one, so every now and then I'll make a little bit of progress like this. And you can see this house here that I'm building, this is the third one so far. Um, I've got most of the outside done, so I built this in mind with the interior first which is something I mentioned before so we've got this sectioned off little bed area here which isn't really uh, that private but I'll put like a lamp on the wall or something and then we can put some chests here in this little gap that we've created so that becomes like a storage area and I was thinking across here we'll have some seating and in this side over here we'll have like a kitchen area so on the inside the roof looks pretty good um, I put these two slabs here because I didn't want to see the full side of that redstone lamp because you don't see it anywhere else and the windows are kind of small compared to the other buildings. I've made the roof a little bit lower in here which kind of gives it a nice cosy feel and you've got a nice view of the ocean and some of the island from this bit over here although this one's not going to really have a view when that's been built up um, but that's about it. I'm just going to put the interior in here and oh yeah we should take a look underneath as well. You can see I've made that with spruce wood instead of uh, fence posts like I have done before and I've also used some upside down stairs as well. 
Okay, I've finished the interior and at the moment I haven't had too many ideas to do anything we haven't done already, so let's just have a quick look around. You can see it's nothing too fancy. Uh, but what I have done here is I've put one of the paintings on the wall and it just occurred to me that I haven't used these yet. So you can see I've made quite a few of them and I felt like it didn't really look too good in this room because of the jungle wood. This is one of the ones that does look cool, the uh, artwork made by Rue or Roostar. But, um, if we go around into some of these other buildings and place them on the walls they might be more suited although there's clearly not enough room in here to put anything maybe above the door we could have one of those double ones there we go it's always yeah that's something i noticed with these paintings when you hit them did you see it it went up there yeah when you knock them off sometimes they fly off in crazy directions whoa <laughs> oh yeah it can it treats the um the door like it's a full block so if i place one here we go again, it's difficult. If I place one to this side of it, there you go, perfect example, you can get um, a, one going over the door like that. I felt like building another house and I was just going to build it all and then show you, but it became quite challenging, so yeah, I thought I'd talk about it. But this is the last house on this side over here. I want to build some more around there in the future and I think one of the next ones I want to do is a really big house because all of these are similar size and they're quite... Um, limiting because they're small you know there's not a lot of variation I can do especially with the interior between each house but anyway this one we've gone for spruce wood I've added this little thing at the entrance here this is like a porch and I just wanted to do that to make it different from the other houses so there will be some doors here and then you can see inside I haven't put any windows in yet and I thought this time I'd do it this way I'd come inside and decide where I want my windows first um, also got a stone floor just to do something different um, all the other ones have got a lot of wood in them so I thought I'd change that and then down here I haven't used any fence posts I've just gone for the support struts like on the other one um, I'll add more detail down here and I think I'm going to try and remove some of the spruce wood at the bottom here because although we don't have the windows in you can see all that spruce wood looks quite unappealing so we need to add some detail in here as well and also the roof is sloped which is isn't well isn't looking too great um, and I was thinking about putting like a skylight in it or something so I have some glass blocks up the top here but at the moment you can see the roof doesn't look too great either. So I think this house is about as finished as it will get for now. I'm not too sure about the roof. It's the one thing that I don't think I can really make look good unless I change it all around. But the thing is it looks great on the inside. Now as we walk in you'll see that that is an awesome view that we have here. And what I did is I thought, I came in here and I thought that rather than put the windows on the sides like I normally do, I'll put them on the corner parts. And then once I would outlined two sections like that, it made sense to remove the bits in the middle. And then we had this really nice panoramic view, which I think is pretty cool. It's a shame that um, there's actually a lot of ocean there. It would be nice if you had, say, that bit of land going all the way across and around there. But either way, it's a great view. So I just decided... Um, to put some seats here looking out and I don't really know what this would be as such maybe a place you sit down and eat with a nice view um, but yeah I'll just put a furnace and chest on either side and I think I'm just going to leave it like that maybe you guys would have some uh, ideas for what else we could put in here but that just seems kind of complete to me and I think the roof adds to the view as well the way it slopes up so that is that house done and now I'm just going to grab the names of the donators and put the signs on the walls so Sean Smith, thank you very much for your donation. This is your house in my village on the Hermitcraft server and I've called it a bed sit because it's basically a little one room apartment. But some of you may know Sean from the Geomine server. We've done a tour of his base some time ago on the Geomine World Tour. I'll put a link to that in the description box if you're interested in checking it out and there'll also be another episode of that out tomorrow as we went on a tour of Burgundy's base recently. Uh, but the building over here, I've called it The View and I think there might be a building name that implies it's a building with a view but I don't know what that is so if anyone does leave a comment and we can change that to the proper name for this building but otherwise um, thank you Nick McKellett I hope I pronounced your name correctly I usually get foreign names wrong but thank you for your donation and this is your house in the village on the Hermitcraft server so I thought it would be a good time now to come out here and have a look at the buildings and they look really good together. The more of them you build, the the better they look. And I think when we get some bigger buildings just behind them in the background, it really starts to take shape. 
um, but I might want to make some modifications to the bedsit building. Um, from the outside there's a lack of detail on it. You can see we've got stairs and different coloured woods on the outside on these ones, but this one I haven't really done too much. We've got the stone bricks there, so what I might do is just make a couple of modifications to the outside of this. There we go, that looks a lot better now, just a simple little bit of extra detail and your building can look that much better. Um, what I did here is I just selected the blocks between the gaps with the stairs underneath and now when you look at it you can see the wooden planks extending all the way to the end here and then you've got this lip from the stairs, so that looks really good. At the moment I'm not too sure what it is I want to do next this episode and the reason why is because I have a big project that I've been thinking about for a while that I really want to start and it's the kind of thing that I don't want to um, you know, talk about one episode and then it takes forever for me to get on with. I want to get it all done and get it out of the way and then show you it so I'm going to be starting that as soon as I can and recording it all and then I'll put it in an episode um, when the time is right. I mean hopefully I can get it all done by next episode but it's a big project so I'm not too sure. But um, I've been looking around and thinking about what other things I could do this episode and it's all just simple little stuff like I could do some villager trading, I could go uh, mining for resources, I need to continue lighting up all the unlit areas, there's not many of them left but none of this stuff really makes for interesting episodes and we are working on some projects still like the Never Tunnel or Tube as I keep forgetting to call it. Um, but I've already worked on that a lot this episode, in fact I've spent quite a lot of time because I've been travelling back and forth between the main village and in general I want to make these episodes longer but sometimes you know it just it comes to a point like this where all I want to do is some off camera work at the moment and then start that project for hopefully the next episode but it could take me a long time. So anyway I would like to thank you for watching as always and I will see you next time.